This kit will work if you have one rear remote or no rear remotes. You can tap right into the Power Beyond. The hoses that come with the kit may or may not be too short for your application. If you want to run this flail mower, you're going to need a dual rear remote system. We bought this kit from Summit Hydraulics and it allows you to tap into your Power Beyond and create two fully functioning electrically controlled rear remotes. That's a mouthful to say. This video is specifically installing this kit on a T25 by TYM, but the principle is the same on all tractors and this kit is pretty much universal. Before we go any further, let's talk about some basic hydraulic function. Before you start working on hydraulics, turn the tractor off and relieve all pressure by moving all valves up and down, in and out. Just move all your valves around so that you know there's no pressure. Once that's done, it's safe to work. Now imagine this is your tractor hydraulic pump. The blue side is sucking fluid from the hydraulic reservoir in the rear of the transmission of the tractor. The red side is your pressure side. The, the pressure side is what does your work. As you can see, this cylinder going in and out. So this is in the most simplest terms. Fluid on your tractor is stored in their common sump or your transmission. From that point, the pump creates suction and pulls it through the pump, creating pressure on the other side. This pressure is then sent to do the work. The valve will divert that pressure either to one side or the other side of a cylinder. Then what is not used will be sent back through the return line. In this video, I'm going to show you how we cut in past the loader valve in between the loader valve and the rear remotes of the tractor. Let me give you just a little bit of a rundown of that. It's a little bit more complicated than this, but this will give you a good idea. Whenever you put anything between the valve and the reservoir, that line becomes a pressure line. Then you will return fluid to the reservoir through the additional port. This is very rudimentary and like I said, it's a lot more complicated than this, but I think this gets us started. This kit is pretty easy to install. I just didn't have the uh, time in this video to give you a full rundown on the hydraulic fluid dynamics. You're looking at the hose I disconnected. This line came from the loader valve and went up to the rear remote valve on top of the rear of the transmission. So this is where I'm breaking in, if you will, to my hydraulics. For the people that are doing the T25 or the T264, this is a uh, what we call a British thread. So when you go to your hydraulic shop, just bring the, the that adapter out of the uh, valve and carry that with you. That'll make it easier for them to match up the hoses. Now this kit won't be a complete unboxing because I had already installed this hydraulic dual remote kit on my T264, so I'm just moving it over. As you can see in this little video clip here, I'm talking about some of the differences in the T25 and the uh, T264. It didn't have the little bracket sticking off on the T264, and it also didn't have the rear lights. So after much consideration, we thought about it and we moved it over to this side. And that was basically what I was saying in this video. It turned out the audio in this video was not really that great. We ended up mounting the bracket on the right side of the tractor as you're setting on it. As you can see here, it's pretty simple to go ahead and put the bolts through and clamp it down, kind of snugging it up and then coming back and tighten it down really good. This is when I was mulling it over and thinking about how it would affect the location of my backhoe and my implements. So think that through. It turned out to work perfectly by mounting it on the last set of holes. The valve just snug right in under the roller protection system. Now that your valve is mounted, this is when you want to measure the length of the holes from the valve down to the top of the transmission. I ended up cutting my hoses at four foot and six inches long. It was just a little bit long, but it's okay. I then put the provided 90 degree adapters on and redirected the flow downwards. Make sure that the line coming from the loader control valve goes to the port with a P on it. That's your power beyond. This one is a must to make it work right. The port marked with a T will go to the top of the transmission. Take your time and route the line, making sure it won't be pinched and then support it while you tighten the hose. I know I'm saying this again, but it's important. Make sure that the line that comes from the loader control valve goes to the line that goes to the P port. P port, that just sounds wrong. 
Hang on with me, I'll be right back. Make sure you tighten all the lines up at this point and you may have to be creative with your wrenches. As you can see here, me and Tanya had to kind of tag team this to make sure that we got all the lines good and tight. Now tighten the adapters up to the new valve and you'll probably want to at some point here put another wrench on to support as well. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on this valve in that way. To keep from uh, kinking your hoses, make sure you put one wrench on the bottom to support it and then use the other wrench to tighten it to the adapter. Make sure not to spin your hoses and put them in a bind. Buy yourself some really good zip ties and take the time that you need to properly secure these lines up the back of the Rolo protection bar. The more this stuff wiggles around, the more opportunity for wear. This is what my final product looked like up under the seat. You can, you can see what I'm talking about, the hose is being a little too long. I set the seat back down to do a fit check to make sure nothing was in the way. This was pain for me to do to drill holes in my new tractor, but I wanted my valve controls to be mounted right here on the right side. There wasn't a lot of options here. As you can see, the right side of this tractor is already pretty busy. After I got my bracket mounted, I mounted my new electric switch. We switch this toggle backwards and forward. All you really need to make this work is a uh, power source in the ground. I just slid a little putty knife up under this cover here and drilled me a pretty nice little uh, way to route the wire through without really getting any, anything. I want it to have a nice professional look when it's over. I took the three screws out of the cover so I could lift it up real easy and then routed the wires up under the cover and then I went ahead and put the three screws back in, holding, holding it down. Here's the end result, and I think it looks pretty clean. Plug in the wiring harness into the uh, bows, and then zip tie everything down nice and tight. The last thing to do, unfortunately I was not able to capture the video. You need to run your power wire to a power source that comes on when the key is on, and also you need to run the ground wire to a good grounding spot.